There's a new podcast called Now What's Next from Morgan Stanley. It's filled with stories of people trying to adapt to and look beyond the global crisis we're facing. Chefs, entrepreneurs, healthcare workers, grounded world travelers. There's even an astronaut. Their stories are unique and their outlooks are optimistic. Listen to Now What's Next wherever you get your podcasts. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, no more waiting. Here's the all-new Ford Maverick pickup. And did Ford pull a fast one on us or what? We thought we had a good basic idea of what this truck was going to be like. But a standard hybrid powertrain that should deliver up to 40 mpg in the city was not expected. That setup pairs a two and a half liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder to an electric motor and CVT to drive the front wheels. Combined, it puts out 191 horsepower and has the ability to carry 1,500 pounds or tow up to 2,000 pounds. There's a more powerful 250 horsepower setup that features a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine, an eight speed automatic, and either front or all wheel drive. With an optional tow package, it's able to handle up to 4,000 pounds. As we've been saying, the Maverick is intended to fit a number of lifestyles, and as such, Ford tried to make it as customizable as possible. A specially designed slot in the back of the center console allows a number of attachments, from additional cup holders to hooks for bags and purses. Ford is even working to publish the dimensions of that slot so people can 3D print their own customized solutions. The four and a half foot bed area is also particularly customizable. There's ways to segment storage, create an elevated floor or bike or kayak rack, as well as two tie downs, four D rings and built in threaded holes. Two 110 volt, 400 watt electrical outlets, one in the bed, one in the cabin, can support anything from a cell phone to a jigsaw. We've seen our comments section light up over the years about the need for a truck like this to come back. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Maverick sells once it hits the American market this fall with a starting MSRP of just under 20 grand. The Biden administration wrapped up its findings of a 100-day review of the USA's supply chains for a number of industries, including automotive. The goal is to rebuild domestic manufacturing of critical materials and products and diversify the sources to make sure the U.S. doesn't suffer shortages. The administration is taking immediate steps to secure supplies for advanced batteries, invest in production and processing of critical minerals, and address the chip shortage. There will also be requirements that companies that develop products with federal support must manufacture them in the U.S. The White House will release more supply chain related details over the next few weeks and months. There's been a lot of speculation and rumors over Apple jumping into the electric car market. And now Reuters reports that the tech giant is in early talks with Chinese battery maker CATL and car company BYD about battery supplies for its EV. All three companies declined to comment on the report. But sources say Apple wants to manufacture the batteries in the U.S., but CATL is reluctant to open a facility in the U.S. due to tensions between China and the U.S. While Apple has not confirmed plans for its EV, last December Reuters reported that it's aiming to introduce it in 2024. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. The Kia Sportage is losing its bubbly appearance in favor of a more aggressive style for the all-new fifth generation. Note the hard, sharp lines around the rear exhaust, tail lamps, D-pillar, and probably best highlighted by the boomerang DRLs at the front. 
The look of the front end is somewhat mimicked on the interior by air vents that seem to bookend the large display screens that make up the instrument cluster and infotainment. You know, you might not expect to see such a nice interior in a compact vehicle like this, but the segment is so hot and competitive, automakers want something that is going to set them apart from the crowd. Like Ford, Renault is taking one of its strongest car nameplates and using it for an electric crossover. The Magan E-Tech Electric, or what it also calls the Magan E, is now entering testing out on the open road with a fleet of 30 pre-production cars. There's not a lot of details at the moment, but we can tell you it's based on Renault's modular EV platform, features a 217 horsepower motor, a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, and an estimated 450 kilometers, or roughly 280 miles of range, based on the WLTP test. I'm sure we'll have more details soon. Last week, it was reported that Tesla sales in China were down 50% in May. However, according to the China Passenger Car Association, Tesla had more than 33,000 wholesales of locally made vehicles last month, which is an increase of about 30%. Of those, more than 11,500 were exported, down from 14,000 in April. We think Tesla would avoid a lot of speculation about its sales if it hadn't shut down its PR department, which could address the discrepancies in the sales numbers. There's a new podcast called Now What's Next from Morgan Stanley. It's filled with stories of people trying to adapt to and look beyond the global crisis we're facing. Chefs, entrepreneurs, healthcare workers, grounded world travelers. There's even an astronaut. Their stories are unique, and their outlooks are optimistic. Listen to Now What's Next wherever you get your podcasts. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Well, all of a sudden, plug-in hybrids are a hot commodity in China. Last month, PHEV sales grew faster than BEVs or regular hybrids. PHEV sales were up 45% in May compared to April, while hybrids were up 26% and BEVs were up 16%. One reason is that more PHEV models are coming into the market. BYD just launched three new models that use its latest plug-in tech called DMI that can go 120 kilometers or about 75 miles on a charge and offers AC slow charging or DC fast charging. Well, General Motors has something that no other car company has, OnStar. The connected car technology offers a host of digital services, including real live operators you can talk to who are trained in emergency response. The system is so effective at tracking cars and traffic flow that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security works with OnStar during mass evacuations for hurricanes. But OnStar has only been available to GM customers. But now GM is reaching out to anyone who wants to download the OnStar app on their phone for 15 bucks a month. That means users can get emergency services that track their location by their phone. In other words, OnStar is now branching out beyond cars. Reuters reports that GM thinks the total addressable market for these services is $30 billion a year. And hey, we've got a great Autoline After Hours coming up on Thursday. We're going to have Phil Eiler, the CEO of a supplier called Gentherm. Maybe you've never heard of them, but they have just about cornered the market for heated and cooled seats in cars, and they've got a great story of how they got there. Then we'll also have Martin Fisher, a board member at ZF, the giant supplier, which is undergoing an amazing transformation from a traditional ICE supplier to becoming a leader in EVs and AVs for passenger and commercial vehicles. So join John and Gary as they track the evolution of the automotive industry. 
And that's a wrap for this report. Thanks for joining us today. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. This episode is sponsored by Now What's Next, a Morgan Stanley podcast that helps make sense of life after the pandemic. Host Sonari Glinton talks with people about how they are rethinking age-old assumptions and finding new opportunities. Now, what's next? This episode is sponsored by Now What's Next, a Morgan Stanley podcast that helps make sense of life after the pandemic. Host Sonari Glinton talks with people about how they are rethinking age-old assumptions and finding new opportunities. Now, what's next?